Hello, everybody. I wanted to make a short video that explains some of the details surrounding the incomparable Gilman reagents. Now, you're not going to be responsible for all these details, but we think by going through them, it'll help you understand the reaction better. So first off, I want to talk about charges. So as you know, you make a Gilman reagent from two equivalents of an organolithium species, adding it to copper iodide. Well, here's how we want you to think about those organolithium species. The bond between the carbon and the lithium is not really a covalent bond. We want you to think of it as being mostly ionic. And when you think about it that way, you realize that the carbon atom is bringing a full negative charge to the reagent when it reacts with copper. Having said that, let's look at the copper. The copper has a plus one formal charge. It's formally a copper one species. And the iodide, of course, has a negative one charge. So let's think about that in the context of creating the Gilman rea reagent. So when we add our first organolithium species to the copper iodide, Overall, we're going to create an intermediate. It's not the, the final product, but we'll create an intermediate that is neutral. In other words, it has no charge along with lithium iodide, but it's not done because a second organolithium species adds to the copper. And when it does that, Notice that the lithium comes along, and we're going to explain this in a second, but I do want you to realize that overall, this entire Gilman reagent has no charge. But let's look at the structure a little more closely as to what this means. In particular, a lot of students have asked me exactly what's going on with these parentheses and that number two. So what we've got is we've got two alkyl groups attached to the same copper atom. The best way to think about it is having those two alkyl groups. Now think about realizing that both of those bring a negative charge with them, the organolithium species, the organo piece, the carbon has that negative charge. So we're bringing two negative charges to that copper, which only has a plus one formal charge. So overall, we end up with a species that's minus one as shown here. And as a result, we need the lithium to act as a counter ion. So when you think of the Gilman reagent, so when you think of that reagent, we want you to think of this, two organic uh, alkyl groups attached to the same copper atom. That whole thing is negatively charged, therefore it's gonna be very nucleophilic, but it needs a lithium ion as a counter ion. Okay, with that being said, let's take a look at some of the reactions. One of the things that I didn't say in class, but we really want to make clear is that only one of those alkyl groups transfer. The other one stays on carbon. So as we generally draw the Gilman reagents reacting, if we have a Gilman reagent and I've numbered the carbon atoms to keep track of them, we have two of those alkyl groups on the same copper lithium species. And then we react with, in this case, a vinyl halide we are gonna create a new carbon-carbon bond and connect those two together. When you think about the mechanism, you can think about it in this fashion. Here I've drawn the Gilman reagent in the more extended form. Because it's got that negative charge associated, you can tell it's gonna be nucleophilic and you can think of that carbon as being nucleophilic. One way a lot of students like to think about this is the following. You can almost think about it as an SN2 reaction. Now, I want to warn you, it's not a simple SN2 reaction, or we would say it. You're not responsible for the details of this mechanism. It has to do with the copper atom and things that we don't talk about in this class. Nevertheless, it's not an unreasonable way to think about what's happening in this process. So again, you know, the, the big thing here is we are creating a carbon-carbon bond. And the great thing about Gilman reagents is that you're going to get that carbon-carbon bond not only from epoxides, but also primary haloalkanes, these vinyl 
halides like I've shown here, and also benzene rings with the halogen attached, so-called aryl halides. But notice the big downside with Gilman reagents from a practical point of view is that one of your alkyl groups that you use to construct it stays on the copper. And so in your products, which you can't use anymore, you end up usually having to throw away that alkyl group. That's something we don't generally like to do in organic chemistry. Nevertheless, you can make some really cool products and that's what we're gonna focus on. Okay, I hope this was helpful.